Adrian. Hi, okay. And hello, everybody. So good to be with you today for another Facebook Live. We have the amazing Adrian Stevens with us today. Thanks so much, Adrian, for joining in. Thanks for inviting me. It's so great to be with you all. Great. So we will speak today with Adrian, who is streaming in from Sweden. I'm calling in from Bolinas in California, and we'd love to hear if you can hear us well and where you're calling in from. So as always, use the chat box, the comments, and let us know. Also, any questions that you have along the way, because then Adrian and I can be integrating those and speak directly to what you're interested in so that you can draw the greatest benefit from our conversation here. And the overall topic for our conversation will be how to access inner peace, even if right now you have immense, uh, intense negative thoughts or emotions or bodily pain. These are things uh, we're all familiar with, and today we'll talk about how to access inner peace in exactly those kinds of situations. So without anything further ado, Adrian, can you still hear me well? I, I have a little well, bit yeah. of a static on my own headphone now, but you don't hear that? No, it's fine. All right, good. Just let me know. Uh, great. We have people here from Belgium, Skåne in Sweden. Beautiful. Nice to see you all here. And Adrian, uh, just let's go right to the beginning of your journey with Balanced View. When and how did you come across Balanced View and what kind of, give us a bit of a picture of what kind of time that was in your life and what you were up to and how you, how you came here. Yeah, great. Thank you. It's so, it's so lovely to share my experience. Um, now, basically, I stumbled across this training when I was 38 years old. And for the, I would say, 10 years prior to that 38-year-old uh, Adrian, um, I'd basically been really quite intently seeking, try to find well-being, um, like everyone else by rearranging my, my circumstances, rearranging my thoughts, emotions and sensations. And, and I really wasn't able to find any sort of well-being. So I was a musician, I worked in the film industry. Um, I'd had a lot of success. And in a way, the more successful I became, the less well-being there was because I thought if I'm successful, Shouldn't I, shouldn't I be at least be a little bit happy? And uh, like everyone else, or like many, many of my friends, certainly, I didn't find what I was looking for in relationships, work, money, all of these things. So I, I'd been quite an avid seeker for around 20 years before I came to the training. And I, again, this, the, the idea was, or at least I thought was, I, you know, I really don't feel comfortable in my own skin. My my experience was really just a, a continuous sense of of frustration, boredom, um, anxiety. Most of the time, it was quite low lying, just an under mutter. But quite often, it would it would flare up, um, especially depression, where I I, I really didn't really want to meet anyone. I just stay indoors. Um, and so this was really my experience. And I, I, I really wanted to not experience these things because that's what I believed I needed to do in order to be ha happy, to not be depressed, not, not feel frustrated, not feel anxiety. And so everything I did in life before I met this training was, was geared towards trying to modify these experiences I, I very rarely had positive experiences, I would say. And even if I did, the self-critical, um, the constructive criticism would just kick in and say, you know, this isn't going to last. It's rubbish anyway. It's pointless. And, mm. and, and it wouldn't last. And so then I'd be off, you know, again, trying to seek an end to this, to this, to these data streams. And how were you seeking? The, the the end to these data streams like what were some of the things that we're doing to um like cut the negativity or to to find that kind of happiness that you were describing well in the beginning 
uh, in my twenties uh, to, to to sort of my early thirties, I used to resort to um, quite extreme measures to either um, nullify my 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 experience or to make it more interesting. So I did a lot of partying, of drinking, of taking drugs. But as I got to my thirties, this obviously wasn't viable because it was so detrimental to my physical health and also my mental health. That's when I sort of shifted to more, you could say, healthy seeking with yoga, meditation, eating, changing my diet, things like this, lots of exercise. But my most, um, I would say, my most enthusiastic seeking was intellectual. I, I was introduced to non-dual practices and, and ideas. And that was the first time, it, and that would have been in my early 20s, where I heard people talking about um, enlightenment. There is something that you can find that will sort out all your problems. And so that I thought, wow, that's, you know, that's really worth looking for. So I went to lots of teachers for the, t the 20 years I was seeking before I came to Balanced View. Lots of teachers, lots of trainings, so many books, all describing this amazing, you could say, carrot. Because for me, um, it was it was it was clear that it, I, you know I could I couldn't get the carrot, and um, I didn't I didn't meet anyone else other I would say than the teachers I went to, who were experiencing what was being described, and. Um, and again, my understanding at that point of what enlightenment was, was that it was going to end all of my negative data. So there wasn't really any difference in terms of my seeking, whether it was, you know, partying, taking drugs, drinking alcohol, or being successful, having intimate relationships. They were all geared to try to modify my, basically to, to, to get rid of my negative data. The, the positive data, I, you know, if, if I feel positive, then that's great. I know it's not going to last. I, I really want to sort out the negative. And for me, just really for the my adult, my whole adult life, as I said before, the underlying experience of my of my life was one of just a general frustration, and I didn't really measure up. And there, there must be something more than this. And so you had. Um... You, you made this shift that sounds quite interesting from like partying and, um, you know, like living also because you said you were in a musician. So I guess it all comes like together in that kind of like vibe that you were living. And then you, you turned that into a holier life, so to speak. Um, did you see any changes there with that shift where you lived like a more wholesome life and, um, and if so, what were they and, and, um, how, how long did they last compared to other things you were doing or how was that shift? Well, I mean, I'd be lying to say that I completely shifted to a wholesome life. I, I was very, very extreme in my approach. I, uh, when I discovered, for example, yoga, then I really went for it. I, in the end, I think I was practicing maybe six, eight hours of yoga a day and eating raw food. But during that five year period, it would all, always be punctuated by the occasional binge where I would go with my friends and go crazy with drink, alcohol and drugs for maybe four or five days. Um, but I can honestly say it, it was obvious that doing exercise, eating healthily, of course, it is hands down better than drinking lots of alcohol and taking drugs. It's just that just never was a solution. That was that was clear to me even when I was a teenager. It was just at the time a fun thing to do. But it, it was so destructive and I'm, I'm actually very grateful that I'm still alive really. But when I did shift to, to reading more about um, what I really wanted to find in life and practicing more wholesome pursuits, I did, I did, I had more energy. I had, I had, I had more, uh, just a sense of well-being. But again, it, it was just a conventional experience of just more alertness. But in a way that made me more, even more aware again of, of the thoughts about me not measuring up, about this not being enough. 
this isn't enough. And, and that was quite a frightening recognition for me um, as, uh, to practice something, for example, yoga, which I, I still practice a, a little bit um, for so for, for five years, for, for, for quite long periods during the day. And just really realizing that how how many hours in a day can I can I practice yoga before I'm going to get the results I want? And it, it was very clear to me with both yoga and meditation that I, I wasn't really able to integrate these practices into the midst of everyday life. Yes, I felt more open and more relaxed and more healthy, but fundamentally that didn't change anything in terms of my thoughts about about life, about who I was, about w what I wanted to happen in life. It was all it was always the same, and that was basically life is just it's just quite disappointing. And I I I I'm not really successful, and the reason the 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 reason for that assessment was because I I just felt miserable. If I was successful, then I wouldn't feel miserable, and that that was basically my understanding. Mm -hmm. But as I said. Quite often, I was successful, and I still felt miserable. So, yeah, I was I was re really ready for this training, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so, how how was that for you then? When you you said you were familiar with many teachers and teachings and practices, and so then you came across like one more thing. How how was that for you? Like what? How did you find out about it first? And then, you know, how, like, what was your first impression or what, what made you, like, even consider coming back a second time? Well, initially, I wasn't going to come to the meeting because I I heard about Candice. Um, I was living in, in, in Rishikesh in India. I'd been living there for about uh, a year. Um, and a, f a very old friend of mine that I, I'd met, said that there was an American woman coming um, and he was going to see her. And this particular friend of mine, he'd been, he'd been a seeker for over 60 years. He was, he was not, he was over 90 years old. So, you know, that's very old and that's a ridiculous amount of time to be seeking 60 years. And so I'd made up my mind to not go because I had lots of, uh, of, of prejudice about America um basically and I, I i just didn't want to go um but this person he actually tracked down my my indian mobile number and phoned me and said you have to come and see this woman she's the real deal now he this was a person that had been i'd sat with we had the same ayurvedic doctor so we would sit in the in the uh, waiting room and he would just talk to me about all the teachers he'd been to see for the last 60 years and he never said he was the real deal about any of these other teachers and to say this about uh, Candice and I thought okay I'll put my prejudice to one side and I will go to this this open meeting so I did I I went to the open meeting I, I didn't want to be there I sat at the back with my arms folded because I really believed that I knew it all and um it's so arrogant you know I basically 20 years is is nothing and um and it was really, it was quite a humbling experience because in that first open meeting, I knew that my 20 years of reading books and trainings and teachers and trainings were absolutely no match for Candice in terms of uh, her, the way she responded. So because I, I, I really felt that I knew a lot. And in that first open meeting, I, I just wanted to get into, into discussions about all the things that I knew about non-duality and all these teachings. But it was very clear to me, literally within the first, probably I would say 20 seconds of Candice responding to me that she knew way more than I would ever know, uh, even about the, the teachers that I consider myself to be an expert in. So I, I just I just stopped talking and um, I, was, I was really prepared to listen and the most amazing thing for me about that that first open meeting was that all I really recognized was my own thoughts about how much I disliked being there. I didn't really like the people I met there. I, it just seemed really strange because they were happy. They were really nice. And that, that was at, the, at that point in time was a, was a weird experience for me. 
I mean, how terrible is that? Um, and I was just really, I just didn't want to be there. I was so frustrated. But another thing that happened in that first open meeting, even though I was sitting at the back, I was doing my best to listen. But most of the time I was so just really consumed with my own thoughts about everything. My friend, my 90 year old friend, he said in that, in that open meeting, I've learned, I've learned more here in the last 20 minutes than I have in the last 40 years. And, and that was another big slap in the face. It immediately snapped me out of my, I'm not coming back. I don't like this. I, you know, just the, 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 um, very re repetitious circular angry data that was going on in my mind. Um, and I remember that clearly and from, from the open meeting and, and then I left. And so for that, the entirety of that first open meeting, I was basically overcome with negative data about, about Candice, about the, the, the setting and, and, and of course myself as well, because the, this, this was who I was. I was just this miserable, angry person. I didn't really like it, but what happened was I went back to my flat then I went out and I sat down by the, the river, the Ganga in Rishikesh still just fuming with anger and frustration. And I just had this amazing experience of a very subtle and pervasive ease that just underpinned and pervaded all of this anger and frustration. It was, it was incredible. It was quite subtle, but really the penny dropped. And then I, I remembered from that first open meeting, Candice talking about open intelligence and how it pervades everything and you don't need to change your data in order to recognize it and and bingo it, it, i was experiencing what was described in the training and that was that that's the first time in 20 years of, of teachers and trainings where i actually experienced what the teacher was talking about and really from that moment on i was i was completely hooked and i i've pretty much been in in involved in relying on the supports that 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 were that were suggested to me um since that day wow um that was great that you had that moment at the ganga so otherwise you wouldn't have come back but as you said you had the direct experience rather than just a description of someone else's experience you you had the direct result in your own experience, which of course is undeniable. Um, powerful. And so from there, what was what was next on your on your on your journey? So you you had this moment where you recognized the the pervasive ease. Um, did that last? How long did it last? Or did it was it just enough to make make you come back? And then how how did it go from there? Well, for me, it, it did last for quite a long time. But the important thing was that every time I, I, I just somehow remembered to just check to see if it was still there. And it was still there. And, and it would come and go. But for the most part, I was still exactly the same. My data absolutely didn't change. My thoughts, emotions and sensations were the same as they'd been for the past 20 years, 25 years, but it was so incredible to actually experience that, that relaxation and openness with, without having to get rid of the anger, the anger and the frustration. That was so key for me. That's that, that really was the, you know, the, 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 the thing that motivated me to go back and every time I did go back. So I, I, I'd go back to the open meetings every day. And um, one of one of the things I, I really love about the, the this training is the suggestions are so simple that, that there aren't many of them. They're super simple. They're not vague in the slightest. So my the best instruction I ever received from Candice was to just show up. And I received that in the second open meeting. So, you know, that's something I can do. I can just show up to open meetings. Then I was listening to talks. Um, that's something that, that was suggested to me. That's something I can do on my iPod. At no stage was I ever asked to do something that was not clear, like 
the other teachings I'd, I'd been involved in. I needed to purify my mind or align my energy channels or purify certain chakras in my body. I mean, I don't really know what that means. And I don't really know if I've done that or not, if I'm, if I, if that's working or not, but I can definitely show up to an open meeting or show up to a training. I can definitely listen to talks. And so this is what I did. I just, because of my 20 years of seeking and having no results, nothing, you know, no valuable results. Um, it was so compelling to actually to start to experience results. And so I, I was just willing to just test every step of the way, the suggestions that were given to me because they were so simple. And um, yeah, it, 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 was, it was just totally incredible. So I, um, I was lucky enough to be invited to do the, the 12 empowerments training um, after I would say maybe three or four open meetings. And because I'd received these results, um, I and, and just to go back briefly, because I hadn't received any results before in, in my 20 years, I really didn't believe that this was going to work. It seemed too good to be true and too easy. But Candice pointed out to me that the only way you're going to find out if it's too good to be true is to test what I'm saying and see what happens. Because she was basically promising me that if I do, if I just show up, if I do trainings, then everything that's described in the training will increasingly become my experience. If I do the 12 empowerment training, then everything that's described in the, in the teachings and everything that's described in the open meetings will increasingly become my experience. I had never had that from a, from a teacher before, a, a cast iron guarantee that if I do this, then the results will be guaranteed. I mean, it, it might have been something like if, if you meditate 10 hours a day for the next 60 years and for the next 1,000 lifetimes, then you might have a slight chance of recognizing the nature of reality. That They were the kinds of things that I was buying into. But for some reason, I stumbled across this training where the teacher was, was telling me, um, if you do this, then this will happen. So I, I just thought, despite my my cynicism, the only way I'm going to, to, to disprove or prove my cynicism is by testing what's being said. And I, and I tested it. And every stage of the way, it, 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 the results started to come about. It, it was, you know, it was just amazing. That is amazing, Adrian. Um, so, but I, I want to go back to one thing that you said before, just so that everybody here who joined us due to the topic today can really hear that your the content of your experience hadn't changed, right? So you you still had the same thoughts, the same like negativity, the same things going on, but there was an underlying ease that you had found through being introduced to what is being shared in the Balance View training. And maybe we'll have a moment later to go more into that. But first, to just really clarify, it isn't that you were suddenly only having like better thoughts or you felt better emotionally. It was in exactly the same internal circumstance that you found that greater ease and peace and and well-being within yourself. And it was right. Is that a proper yeah, summary? Absolutely. I I really especially when I started the 12 empowerments training uh, every day I turned up to the training it was it was such a um, quite a long day the, the 12 empowerments training has been greatly streamlined since 12 years ago but when we when we did it in India it, the days were very long it was I think almost 10 12 hours every day um, and uh, as I said I was living in this beautiful sacred Indian town and you look out the window and you see the Himalayas and you can see the river and it's just, it's, it's like paradise. So to be stuck sitting on the, the most uncomfortable Indian chairs you've ever been introduced to for, for many, many hours, reading, um, list, you know, listening to the teachers talk, 
I was just, again, very, very frustrated. I'd spend a lot of the time star staring out the window. I was fully um, involved in the training, so reading the texts and answering the questions. But a lot of the time, I was basically wishing I wasn't there, looking out the window because I knew my friends were hiking or they were sunbathing on the river banks. Why am I here? Why, why aren't I sunbathing? But just, again, despite all of this frustration, it, it just started to just be very, very clear to me that everything I was experiencing was pervaded by this openness and ease. Initially, it, it was it was like there was the frustration that reminded me to relax and acknowledge the the openness and ease. But very often, it was it was almost simultaneous. And at and at the end of every day, the 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 recognition of open intelligence was just so clear and it was like every evening this training is the most amazing thing where I would say to myself every morning when I got back to the training and the really uncomfortable chairs I'd be saying why am I here why I want to be sunbathing I don't like it this is this is like torture and every evening there was just an explosion of openness and gratitude now of course those extremes they they became less and less but I'm um, as I said before, I was so hooked on the fact that I'd found a teaching and a training that was that was super easy to to practice and be involved in. But it it was it was just I don't understand how I, I, I I'm so lucky to actually have just stumbled and been so unwilling in the beginning. You know, it's it's it really is an amazing uh, amazing good fortune for me but just to return to the the instruction that candice gave to me to to just show up and that that's really what i did she didn't say um just show up but you need to be in a good mood just show up but you need to you know let, yeah we're gonna have a really great time today in the training you need to be really enthusiastic because i was i wasn't i wasn't that at all i was consumed by my negativity but that was such an amazing an amazing gift to be in that situation and circumstance with that data because it was so clear to me that that wasn't wasn't a barrier to me experiencing the benefits and the results of the training which prior to this training I'd been led to believe that I'd absolutely needed to get rid of all of this negativity in order to have even the slightest chance of recognizing the nature of reality and to almost immediately be introduced to the experience of that not being the case at all. However I am, however my experience looks, that is where the recognition of the nature of reality takes place. It, not as an idea, but as an actual experience. It, it was, I couldn't stop myself coming back for the open meetings. I did the 12 empowerments. I immediately went for the next training and the next training and the next training because because of the results I experienced and to this day th those results keep getting more and more more and more um, more and more obvious more and more potent it's it's not something where I've ever reached the finish line so to speak because it just gets better and better all the time. And so that ha how is your experience today? Like how? I mean, you don't look depressed to me. You don't look frustrated. Um, <laughs> well, how how is life for you these days? This was twelve years ago, so now we've let's make a quick fast forward here to two thousand eighteen. Let's see, April twenty second. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Uncle Remus and Zippity Doodah, that song where all the birds. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, that sounds funny, you, though. You can check it out on YouTube afterwards, but it's a, it's a famous Disney. It's at the end of a song, and um, this really happy man, zippity doo da, zippity, and, and all the the animals come, and they're all singing, and all the flowers are. Uh, my oh my, what a wonderful day! Basically, life is magnificent. It's just every single moment is is just pure pleasure, and um, but on a conventional level. At the moment, especially, it's it's actually quite um, quite challenging. I have very bad pain in my in my left arm. It's called tennis elbow, 
and I've had it for many years, but in the last maybe two months, it's really flared up to the point where I can hardly lift a, a mug of coffee with my left hand. It's, uh, it's, it makes the grip um, very, very weak and painful. Um, I have arthritis in my knee. I have arthritis in my hips. I've got tennis elbow in my right arm as well, but it's not as bad. Um, I'm 50 years old and, um, yeah, my body is falling apart, it seems. And if this had happened to me when before this training, I would have been completely consumed with self-pity and thoughts that my, you know, my life's over. I'm not going to be do, able to do any of the things I want to do anymore. I'm really unattractive. I can't exercise. I'm going to get really fat. Oh, I'm so miserable. Just r relentless negativity about what's going on. And I can honestly say that there, that there, 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 are, there are no, there are no descriptions <laughs> at all. Of course, I'm, I'm trying to alleviate these physical symptoms. So I have exercises that I do. I have some devices that I'm testing. But I know that the, the older I get, the worse these things are going to get. They're not going to get better. And, and for me, it's things like depression, that's just a, that's gone. It's just not there. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just have a great sense of purpose and a great sense of enjoyment, a real, a real aliveness again, that pervades everything that I'm experiencing, especially the negative. So like physical pain, um, all of, all of the thoughts around that is, it's just pervaded by this, um, this great, great energy that's simultaneously relaxing, but very, very potent. And I, I think that, that, that would be, um, an explanation of the inexhaustibility that Candice talks about. So, 12 years ago when I was sitting on the banks of the river, when I just noticed that, that subtle ease that pervaded everything. Now that subtle ease is more like a great fire of, of love and openness and power. It's still very relaxing, but it's relaxing and powerful at the same time. And this is just becoming more and more evident as, as, as my basis. And I mean, I don't want to sound like an evangelist, but I would love everyone who's watching this to really, I mean, test the, uh, have a go at the free uh, online Be The Power course. And then, and, and then if you, if you, if that resonates with you, then definitely just jump in the deep end and do the 12 empowerments. It will completely enhance, change everything about, about your life in the most amazing way without really anything changing. And, and, and again, this is for me so important. It, 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 it wasn't that anything changed. It was just that the training, the 12 empowerments and the support and the simple instructions, they just allowed me to recognize what's actually going on. The, the descriptions of what's going on are the, are the least of, of who I am and what my life is. They're pervaded with open intelligence. They're completely inseparable from open intelligence and 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 the the lived reality of that the practical reality of that is that you just feel fantastic even though your leg is about to fall off for example which probably might happen to me i hope your leg will not fall off adrian but that is amazing it's amazing to hear someone speak with such you know indwelling assurance i mean it sounds a bit like you know, when you were sharing before about how convinced the teachers were that you had seen who since, you know, who, but where you didn't see a result. Um, but that same level of conviction, I can completely see for you that is based on, on this result. And one of the things I love about how can structure the four mainstays is that all of us as trainers, we have been in this same chair that that you were describing from. So we have been participants. We came, we were skeptical. We didn't know, is this going to work? How is it going to work? Will I have any results? So we went all through this process. It isn't just one person who had some, you know, inexplicable sudden change in, in their life. 
um, there is so many people who have had just like like you said implemented the instructions and suggestions and then had the results so it's it's very powerful to to hear your personal story thank you so much for for as always uh, just not holding back and in, in sharing anything and to anybody who's watching well actually here on the balance view page if you're new like adrian suggested um give yourself this initial time if this sounds interesting compelling if you could see some of yourself in what we were talking about today we'll post the link to our free training um into the post and also uh, i think nicola will do that today she'll post it also in the comments right now so that you can click there right away and sign up for that it's a free online training thank you nicola i just see it here and um so click that go there register for free and then um take it from there let us know any questions you might have and if you have gone through this already and um, you would love to find out how you can then bring that in a very customized and direct way into your life, then me and I have reserved time for you to speak together in, uh, in a 45 minute call. We'll go through exactly finding out what your direct experience is right now, what's not working, what is working well, and look at like the truth, the actual challenges that are behind all this, and then consider a game plan for you so that you can then live the way that you actually want to live. And we always make it clear our main aim for this call really is to just develop that plan and look at, you know, what is the best next step, whether that is the 12 empowerments like Adrian just shared was his next step or something else, or maybe it's even something that isn't related to what we're doing in Balanced View, will give you a very straightforward honest response to what we feel will be of greatest benefit as your next steps on your on your journey so that you can take the most of your precious life here on this amazing spinning ball called earth so thank you so much for joining again adrian was such a pleasure always a pleasure speaking with you and seeing you thanks for taking the time and thanks all for joining in uh take thank care you. and see you all soon thanks everyone